So welcome back. Today we move to another new topics. So in last few exercise, we make use of the block checking to detect the movement or presence of the user in front of the webcam. And for this one, we try to move a little bit away from the motion detection and to work on with some graphical effect. And after that, we'll combine the two of them such that you can have the additional graphical effect together with the motion detection operation. The topics of this graphical effect we call the particle system. And it is something that's similar to, for example, if you would like to simulate like fire, smoke, cloud, water, and it's quite difficult for you to, for example, to use a 3D model to s model each one pieces of the particle within the fire or within the smoke or within the fog. So it's usually we'll use some sort of formula and the formula will automatically calculate the position, the size and also to change in the color of those tiny particles. And the combination of a group of those particles can have the illusion that you are creating a piece of fire or some sort of smoky effect. So we also need to have the jam head in order to instruct that it, we are going to prepare some of the graphical form. To work on with a particle system, we start with another head. So this is the part head. So we connect the jam head with the part head. And the destination of the particle system is not any other geometrical shape like the rectangle, square, circle, or sphere. Instead, we have something called the part draw. So this is the basic operation of a particle system. We have the part head and we connect it through the part draw. And for the part head, we have some parameter which indicate the speed of the particle generator. So we use the default at this point. And for the part draw, we also have other parameter like we have done in the other geometrical shape like the draw line or draw point. And we are going to see the difference between the two of them a little bit later. In between the part head and part draw, we may need to define the source of your particle. And the definition of the source is actually the part source. So the part source come with a number of parameter through the different inlet. So we'll explain or explore a little bit of the combination of all those parameters later. So at this point, we still use the default at, the point, at this moment. The second parameter usually is the number of particle per frame. So that will determine so how, how huge or how large the particle system is. And the third one will be the, the form of that particles, particle system. For example, if you would like all of them come from one single point, from a line, from uh, other geometrical shape. So usually we'll do the point. So the default one is the point. So after we define the source of the particle system, we will define the destination. This is the end of those particles. And because the system will generate the particle indefinitely, 
So we need to, for example, to save the performance of the system in order to tell the system that when the particles will disappear. So usually we'll use something like the age, so how long that part partic particles will live or will move in that system. And up to that partic particular point, the, the particles will be active. But once it reached the age, the age limit, it will disappear. So we will use the command called QO to kill the old particles from the system. And it also has the parameter, which is a number defined by the time. So this is the most simple operation of a particle system. So you can have a look of the effect. So the default one, we are using the draw line. And then we can move, for example, to the draw point to have a look. The draw line and the draw point. For the part head, we have mentioned we can modify one parameter we call the speed. So this is a number. We can put the speed message over here. And with the dollar sign one, which is a number, so we can actually put in the number over here. Then we can try to move around this number to have a look at the effect. So this is the effect of a higher number. And we can decrease the number. And even with decimal point. And the parameter for the path source will be the number of particles per frame. You can also use a number over here. For the rest of the parameter, we'll stay with the default of the point. And then you can try to have a look of the effect of increasing and decreasing the number. So we increase the number like this one. And maybe we can increase the speed a little bit to, to make it a little bit more impressive. So this is a big number. We can then reduce the number.
Okay. For the third object's part QO, we can also put in a number over here. So the default for that number will be 10. And we can play around with this number. So if we increase the number, so that means the particle will live longer. So you can see the growing number of particles around the screen. And then if we decrease the number, you can see the contrast. So that 10 will be the default one. You can see the difference between the jawline and jaw point. So those are the basic operations of using a particle system. And at this point, the particle system is not interactive at all. So in later exercise, we'll try to integrate the particle system with some form of forces. And the forces will de depend on, the, for example, the location, the movement of the user, such that we can have some form of interactivity with the particle system.